All right, there are many layers to this sandwich and it deserves the justice of making each puzzle piece with excellence. First up, let's talk about those onion buns. First up, let's talk about those onion buns. Today, we're gonna follow instructions to see how this recipe comes out. And by follow instructions, I mean substitute half the ingredients for random things around my house. I first started by pretending to not know how to soften butter right before expertly julienning my onions and butchering chicken like a 10 year pro. I know it doesn't make sense, but I'm gonna deliver this video with more memes nice and yeah. humor than Jimmy Carr so you don't think about it too much. Alright, thank you. Well, hello my peeps and welcome back to the channel. Disclaimer, I love his videos. They're some of my favorites recently, but I can't help myself but to poke a little fun sometimes. And yes, as the title and everything else suggests, we will be following instructions to make Joshua Weissman's Arby's Beef and Cheddar. Now being me, my first instinct was to make a whole bunch of these. I feel like everybody's got a Beef and Cheddar video, but once you see what is involved with this thing, you might understand why a little bit more. But with all that being said, let's get right into this one. As you would expect with mostly all of Joshua Weissman's creations, every component of this will be made from scratch. And all the raw ingredients that you are gonna need are some whole milk and bread flour, garlic powder and butter, hot sauce and Westchester sauce, cheddar cheese, a gigantic prime rib roast, some fresh thyme and rosemary, water and ketchup, some coffee, and even though I'm very tempted, some plain coffee for now. Instant yeast, everything bagel, seasoning, some flour, brown sugar, and granulated sugar. A sweet onion and shallots, salt and pepper, and an egg. Now the very first thing I wanted to tackle was this prime rib roast for many reasons. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that. Depending on how big you get yours and what kind of quality it is, it can run you anywhere from 150, 200, or even more dollars. In my opinion, you would be fine with any beef roast that you have on hand. You do not have to go this expensive. Grab a chuck roast, an eye round, whatever you can find. But the main reason I wanted to start with this is because once you've got your rub ready to go, that being lots of ground coffee, lots of salt and pepper, you have to thoroughly coat the outside of this thing and then leave it uncovered in the fridge for overnight up to a day. I'm pretty excited to see how this comes out, um, mainly because of the complex flavors that that coffee should impart, as long as I don't botch the cooking of this thing. That would be a very expensive mistake, but we're gonna address that a little bit later, because in the meantime, we're gonna prep up all the other components and have them ready to go. The caramelized onion buns look just as good as well. You guys know how I feel about Joshua's buns. These things always come out incredible and soft and delicious. They're usually made with all ingredients easily sourced at a standard grocery store. And in addition to the usual suspects of the water and yeast, flour, eggs, the good stuff like that, as I said, we are adding caramelized onions, just like the Arby's version. A whole lot of butter. These things are gonna rise two separate times. They're gonna get chopped down to eight individual buns, baked off with an egg wash, some of the everything bagel seasoning, a little bit of finishing butter. I'm sure these things are gonna come out great. By the way, while I have a quick second, I wanted to say that I did miss you all very much last week. My trip to the West Coast was incredible. It was my first time out there. Big shout outs to everybody who showed us some love in the DMs and gave us some good recommendations. And I might have been out there for more reasons than one. If you follow the Instagram, you might have an idea of that already. But for the rest of us, I will leave you in suspense for a little bit longer. Also, while I already have the majority of the ideas for next month's video set, that being the pumpkin spice or fall adjacent recipes, I do have one slot open, so if you have ideas, if you've seen something intriguing recently, let me know down in the comments of this video, or shoot me a DM, I'll be reading through everything. I do have some really fun and unique ideas for this year. I'm not gonna make any promises, we have gone pretty big in years past, but let's just say I'm equally as excited for this slate on the way. But back to the topic at hand, I whipped up that Arby sauce, that being mostly ketchup, Put a little bit of the Worcestershire sauce, some of the brown sugar, the hot sauce, garlic powder, and some water. And then I just worked on the cheese sauce, starting with a roux, 
Lots of shredded up cheddar cheese, obviously some milk, some salt and pepper to taste, and then I finished by cooking off my roast. Just like Joshua, I wanted to cook this off on a bed of lots of fresh rosemary and thyme, the shallots, a little shot of the oil. That's another step that is very optional, unless you've got an overgrown herb garden outside that you're trying to get rid of anyway because it's getting cold, um, it's probably a step you can skip. And I just roasted this off at 325 degrees until the internal temp registered about 120. This took closer to two hours. I feel like I should have took it out of the fridge and let it come completely to room temperature first. But regardless, we eventually got there and this thing was looking pretty damn good if I say so myself. The bones were kind of annoying to cut around. Um, I was wondering if I should have removed them, but either way, I was able to get myself a couple of thin slices, and then I toasted off a bun with lots of butter, layered all this gorgeous stuff together. Are you understanding now why I only did one of these sandwiches? I feel like if I did my usual three or four, we would have been here for weeks. That is time that we do not have, but for right now, let's see if the time we put into this guy is worth it. Now that is a thumbnail. Mm. Next level. Wow. First of all, the look at this thing is unreal. This could be in a commercial just for you to go to the restaurant and be disappointed. Looking at you, Taco Bell. Um, but usually there's a weak link in stuff like this. I can't pinpoint one. The bread is good. Nobody's surprised by that. But this beef is so good. Dare I say worth the price because you do get a lot of it as well that would make 20 of these sandwiches The cheese sauce is good. The red ketchupy RB sauce gets a little bit lost But when you do taste it, it's very strong just an overall absolutely incredible piece of food um, 9.7 out of 10 this thing's up there with the in-and-out burger the filet fish the Whopper Joshua just makes really good stuff He does get clowned on a lot Probably a little bit too harshly, but you can't deny his cooking prowess, and this is another perfect example. Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision.